The 1988 24 Hours of Le Mans was one of the most memorable events in the history of British motorsports. At the end of the race, some 50,000 British fans stood in complete awe as three Jaguar XJR9s rolled over the finish line where they were serenaded by hundreds of ecstatic fans. The victory put an end to Porsche's dominance in Le Mans, and it was no fluke. Designed by Tony Southgate and built by Tom Walkinshaw Racing, the Jaguar XJR9 was designed specifically to beat Porsche, which I'm sure they appreciated. The car was created in the era of Group C prototype sports car racing, a classification that was developed by the FIA in a radical move that changed motorsport forever. Technically, Group C was defined by fuel consumption, with a max fuel consumption placed at 60 litres of 102 octane RON racing fuel per 100 kilometres. This was to be fed by a tank that was no larger than 100 litres. And initially, no more than five fuel stops were allowed, with races originally being as long as 1,000 kilometres, leaving the cars with no more than 600 litres of fuel, the regulations became a real struggle for many manufacturers to meet. At the 24 hours of Le Mans, a total of 2600 litres of fuel was initially made available to the vehicles, although as time went on, those provisions were gradually reduced, much to the irritation of many of the race teams. The regulations did not stipulate much about the engines though, meaning that the engineers could pretty much use any engine of their choice. The regulations came with a minimum and maximum dimensions for the car and a minimum weight limit of 800kg at first, which was later increased to 850kg in 1985. Provided the engine was designed by a manufacturer already participating in Group A or Group B, it was eligible for Group C. Jaguar were rubbing their hands together. In Group C, Porsche led the way dominating with the 956 and crushing the fast but unreliable Lancia LC2s and the Ford C100. I'm personally frankly shocked that German engineering stood a chance against the might of Italy and America. With the Jaguar XJR9, Tony Southgate built a car that would exploit the weaknesses of Porsche directly, weaknesses that not many others thought they had. He would come up with modifications that would dumbfound the engineers at Porsche and propel the Jaguar XJR9 to championship victory in 1988 for both the Constructors' and Drivers' Championship. So how did they do it? Southgate was given a massive V12 engine to work with, which according to him was the biggest engine he'd ever seen at the time. Although the engine did show some promise, its sheer weight was going to be a major challenge for the design team. But that was the job given to him. He was to have total creative influence over every other part of the vehicle, but whatever design he came up with, it had to include that V12 engine. Standing between Southgate and Victory was Porsche. Their cars were incredibly reliable, something a Jaguar engineer could only dream about, which explains in part why they had been so dominant all those years. And while their cars were sleek and aerodynamically impressive, Southgate realised that their obsession with long tails was much more of a weakness than anybody knew, and he sought to take advantage of this. Southgate had done some previous wind tunnel work with the London Imperial College wind tunnel facility and Rolling Road, while working on the Ford C100 Mark III. Porsche, meanwhile, had done their wind tunnel tests using a fixed road. This was enough information for Southgate to know that the information the Porsche team had on the car's centre of pressure was likely to be about 15% off. Southgate also recognised that at Le Mans, for the Jaguar team to stand any chance of winning, they would have to beat Porsche on the straights. To do this, he and his team worked to reduce the drag of the car until the XJR9 could achieve a theoretical top speed of 240 miles per hour. The Porsches could usually achieve 235 miles per hour on the straight. While this was only a 2% boost against the Porsches, that's all they needed. To improve the downforce, Southgate decided to chop off the tail, a move that astounded the engineers at Porsche, who thought it was inconceivable to have a car race at Le Mans with a short tail. What the Porsche engineers couldn't get their heads around was the fact the rear wing was effectively an extension of the body. 
pulling air out of the Venturi tunnels. Additionally, Porsche's boxer motor layout interfered with the ground effect tunnels under their car, limiting the effectiveness of the floor's aerodynamics. The XJR9's ability to pull air through its Venturi tunnels with its rear wing meant the tunnels could have a much steeper angle as they approached the back of the vehicle, without risking air stalling and reducing the downforce created by the Venturi effect. Porsche couldn't have achieved this even if they wanted to because their engine and transmission layout already interfered with their shallower Venturi tunnels. Another area that Southgate sought to improve over the Porsches was in their chassis. Porsche used a basic aluminium box section which was far from impressive. Southgate on the other hand went balls to the wall and demanded a full carbon fibre monocoque chassis, creating an incredibly stiff structure while keeping in line with the weight regulations of the vehicle. The XJR9's humongous engine was placed as far forward as possible, right up to the shoulder of the driver. Because of the weight of the engine and its high centre of gravity, it dominated the vehicle's design and handling characteristics, easily making up for the weight savings of the carbon monocoque. But this placement of the engine and the car's aerodynamic package meant the car was able to generate a hell of a lot of downforce. And as a bonus, it had about 40% of its aerodynamic pressure over the front axle, as opposed to Porsche's 25%. What Tony Southgate and his team had built was a Le Mans-specific aerodynamic package, a car designed specifically for the race. It had a different kind of nose with no front splitter, a different tail and underwing. To provide better airflow to the rear wing, the body of the car was designed to be very close to the tyre, in the end, what the team created was an all-carbon, high-downforce package that was undeniably a huge improvement on the Porsche. The XJR9's engine was a 7-litre, 700 brake horsepower powerhouse, capable of a top speed of 245 miles per hour. While this Jaguar car was set up to beat the Porsches, which it eventually did, the downfall of the Jaguar would come but not from who they feared, from the development of the Sauber Mercedes C9, which was powered by a twin turbocharged 5 litre V8. This was a low boost, more economical solution that was able to generate even more power than Jaguar's now outdated 7 litre V12. Nevertheless, the XJR9's famous 1988 Le Mans victory cemented its place as one of the most memorable and most loved cars of its generation and remains a beacon of Jaguar's glory years.